questions. Um, why do those produce so much vapor? What do I need to get started? And the mechanical mod itself is actually a really simple device. It's basically a hollow tube that's made out of metal and its job is to take the, take the power from the battery and push it to the build deck and the good mods, you have very little voltage drop coming, you know, that you're losing on the way to the build deck from the battery. And um, the reason you get so much vapor out of a mechanical mod with a rebuildable atomizer versus a mechanical mod with, say, a pro tank. Um, the battery that you need for a mechanical mod is a 18650 or 26650. You got to make sure it's an IMR high drain battery. The IMR high drain battery will work in either a mechanical mod or a variable voltage mod, but if you are using a variable voltage mod, you don't really need an IMR battery, where on a mechanical mod, if you're going to be building coils on a, and have a dripper and doing sub-ohm coils, then it's very necessary that you have the IMR battery. So the reason you need an IMR battery is Whenever you build the coils on your build deck and it's a low ohm build, which would mean anything under one ohm, the lower the resistance of the build that you do, the more power is needed from the battery and the quicker it needs it. If you have an ICR battery, they are good, are they a great battery for a variable voltage mod and the only thing you really want to look for if you have a variable voltage mod in a battery that you choose is that it has a high milliamp per hour. The variable voltage mods have all of the safety features built into the mod itself, where on a mechanical mod it's just a hollow tube, there's no circuit board, there's no computer chip, there's nothing that regulates the voltage. So on your variable voltage mod, like a Smoketech SID for example, it has a computer chip inside that's going to protect it from shorting out and if there's a coil in, the, in your tank that's any lower than 1.2 ohms it will say low load on the screen and it will prevent that mod from firing. The ICR batteries are high milliamp per hour which is the milliamp per hour is the size of the gas tank on a battery. How long it's going to last on a full charge. And so when looking for a battery for a variable voltage mod, you want high milliamp per hour, but they're always going to be relatively low amp batteries, low amperage batteries. So they're going to be 5 or 10 amp batteries that are 3,000, 3,500 milliamp per hour. So you get a long life out of the, your, your battery lasts a very long time on a full charge, and the, the voltage is regulated from what you set your voltage or wattage to on the variable voltage mod. On a mechanical mod, there's, it's going to operate off of the voltage that your battery has on its charge. Any battery, whether it's an ICR or an IMR battery, fully charged will produce 4.2 volts. It'll work its way down as the day goes on, and it's going to die right around 3.4 volts. Much like your simple Ego battery, um, you know, an Ego battery that you cannot adjust the voltage they do the same thing. Start off at 4.2, kind of drop as the day goes on, and they'll die right around 3.4 volts. The reason that you get so much vapor production off of that off of that voltage, the same voltage that an Ego battery is producing, is because when you build the coils on a dripper tank, right here I have a Mephisto on a Stingray X. Um, the battery that I have is an IMR high drain battery. These are the LG 35 amp batteries, and they're 2,500 milliamp per hour, which is actually a pretty high milliamp per hour for a high drain battery that has 35 amps. So the amperage is the amperage is the ability how quickly that battery can produce power and how much power it has to give. So the coil that I built on here is going to be about a 0.15 ohm coil. That's a 0 0.15 ohm coil. Now, if I took a pro tank, for example, 
A pro tank, you can get a 1.8 ohm, 2.2 ohm, 2.5 ohm single coils for the pro tank twos. This is a 0 0.15, so it's less than one tenth of the lowest ohm you can get on a pro tank coil. Whenever you have a very low resistance, it's going to increase the wattage. The lower resistance coil you have, the higher wattage you'll get off of the same voltage. So if I break that down, let's say I have a battery that's almost fully charged and is producing four volts. It's set at four volts. Or if you have a winder battery and you set it at four volts, for example, and you have a 2.5 ohm coil and a pro tank. Well, four volts with a 2.5 ohm coil is going to give you, is going to result in about nine watts. Say you have the same four volts being produced off of a battery, but you put a 0.15 ohm coil on, say, your RDA. With that low resistance, the same 4 volts that was only 9 or 10 watts is now going to be 35 watts, 40 watts, a very high wattage. So it needs a lot of power from that battery very quickly. If you put an ICR battery in a mechanical mod and you have a 0.15 ohm build on there, it's asking for more power than that battery is able to deliver and is going to result in you venting out that ICR battery. It will just quit working one day or it might leak battery acid. It just doesn't have the power that that 1 point, or 0 0.15 ohm build is asking for. It's asking for a lot of power very quickly. That's why you need a high drain IMR battery. The higher the amperage, the safer it is to go lower on the resistance because it has more power to provide. The lower the resistance, the lower the ohms of your build, generally the more vapor you're going to get because it's a higher wattage. It's, it's more power. And I can't stress that enough how important it is to use the correct battery. And if you're making the jump from a variable voltage to a mechanical mod, it's important that you do the research and figure out what's a safe build to do. Um, what, what supplies you need, what tools you need, and if you ever have any questions, if, if you're making the jump and you want to start dripping and you want to start building coils, um, come on in. If you can't come in, give us a call. We can definitely help you out, walk you through what you'll need, what you need to do. In my opinion, the most, the most dangerous thing about mechanical mods and uh, drippers is not that a battery is going to explode per se. My concern is that if somebody is laying down on their couch or on their bed and using their dripper, taking a couple puffs while watching TV while they're about to go to bed, and they forget to lock the locking ring on the mod. Now, a lot of times the magnets or the springs will be strong enough to support if you set the mod down and it won't fire upon itself. However, if you fall asleep and forget to lock your mod and you roll over onto the button where it starts to fire, it will continue to fire until the battery either melts, dies, or you burn your house down because it will catch your cotton on fire. It's not too dangerous if you have it in your hand and your cotton's dry catches on fire. You can just, you know, blow it out or take everything apart, get your battery out of there real quick. But if you're sleeping and you roll over onto your mod, it can catch your sheets on fire. And next thing you know, you wake up and your bed's on fire. So that's the part that scares me the most about um, rebuildables, mechanical mods. But it is very important to get the, safe, uh, the safest equipment, the, the safest battery for what you're going to be doing. And so just having a little background information, a little bit of knowledge about it is going to be very helpful for you. Um, if you ever have any questions, come ask us. And uh, if I think of anything else, I'll uh, make another video and, uh, and we can talk about it some more. So.